welcome. The debut of the 5090 Astral positions it above the Strix and Asus's lineup. The ROG Astral RTX 5090 features a custom PCB and cooling solution, making it potentially the best air-cooled card on the market. But what elevates this card above the rest? To find out, we'll unbox and have an up-close look at the RTX 5090 Astral. We'll test it for performance and thermals, and then we'll tear it down to see what's inside right here, right now. This is the Vector Network, and let's begin. The ROG Astro GeForce RTX 5090 has an all-metal cooler with matte black and silver materials and metal surfaces, punctuated by a fourth fan on the back designed to pull air from the heatsink. This is a substantial 4-slot card with 2 HDMI and 3 DisplayPort 2.1B ports. The Astro's cooler shroud uses three Axial Tech 105mm fans. This RTX 5090 OC version comes with a boost frequency of 2580MHz, a 7% factory overclock over the Founders Edition. ASUS has also increased the default power limit from 575 to 600 watts, which is right up to the maximum power draw of the 16-pin connector. Next to the power connector are two fan headers to control additional case fans via the GPU temperature. There is a dual BIOS switch that allows for a manual toggle between the performance and silent BIOS. For testing, we are using the default performance BIOS. To obtain the results, we're using the Ryzen 7 9800X3D air-cooled by the Noctua NH-U12A on the ASUS ROG Strix X670E-E motherboard and 32GB of Corsair DDR5 memory, the Corsair HX1200i, a 1200W PSU, powers the system on an open air test bench with ambient room temperature at 21 degrees Celsius. As stock, 3 Mark Speedway averaged 139 frames per second and the GPU core and memory temperatures were 58 and 79 degrees Celsius, respectively. The fan spun at 59% speed and the GPU power usage averaged 97% at 579 watts. Undervolting the card to 0.95 millivolts and adding 100 megahertz to the core clock, the GPU core and memory temperatures each decreased 3 degrees to 55 and 76 degrees Celsius, respectively and the fan spun 11% lower at 48%. GPU power usage decreased 17% to 478 watts and FPS decreased 6% to 130 frames per second. Here is a unique feature worth noting. The Astro RTX 5090 features software monitoring of the six power pins on the 12 volt high power cable. In real time, it is pulling more than nine amps or marked red and more than 10 amps will trigger a warning message. Considering the potentially low tolerance for failure on these compact power connectors, this is an exceptionally useful feature, notably absent from other cards like the Founders Edition. The dimensions of the coolers for the ROG Astro RTX 5090 and the ROG Strix RTX 4090 are nearly identical, but the Astro cooler weighs over 3,000 grams, 21% more than the Strix cooler. The Astro has a heavier and more premium cooling solution using more substantial metals and materials and a fourth fan for the more densely packed heatsink. Compared to the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 4090, the ROG Astro RTX 5090 in 3D Mark Speedway averaged 39% more FPS increasing from 100 to 139 frames per second. The power usage also increased 37% from 423 to 579 watts. The GPU core is 4 degrees cooler, decreasing from 62 to 58 degrees Celsius, and the fan spun 40% faster, increasing from 42 to 59%. We'll start the teardown by first unplugging the three cable headers along the bottom of the card. Then we'll remove three Phillips head screws from the I.O. bracket. Now we'll remove six screws from the back plate.
This detaches the cooler shroud. The cooler shroud uses a die cast metal frame that houses the triple front side fans. The rigid frame provides structural and mounting stability for the cooling solution. Next, we'll remove the four screws around the processor. And the bracket. This detaches the heat sink. This heat sink has a vapor chamber with milled sunken pathways and eight heat pipes. The heat sink is densely packed with fins, increasing the overall cooling surface area. Next, we'll remove the seven screws securing the PCB to the back plate. This detaches the back plate. The back plate is made of the same rigid die cast metal, protects the card, and houses the fourth fan. The fourth fan provides the additional airflow needed for the denser heatsink. For reference, the front side VRM controllers and memory thermal pads are all one and a half millimeters thick. The backplate VRM and memory thermal pads are 2 mm thick and the spacer is 3 mm thick. The RTX 5090 is powered by NVIDIA's GB202 graphics processor. The GDDR7 memory chips are made by Samsung and are 2 GB per chip and there are 16 chips for 32 GB total. The Astro has a 24 phase VRM powering the GPU and a 7 phase VRM powering the memory. For comparison to the previous generation, the ROG Strix RTX 4090 uses the AD102 chip, sizing in at 609 millimeters squared. The ROG Astro RTX 5090 uses the GB202 chip, which is 750 millimeters squared, resulting in a processor that is 23% larger, allowing for 21% more transistors and 33% more CUDA cores. The RTX 5090 has 32 gigabytes or 33% more memory than the 24 gigabytes on the RTX 4090. On the back of the card, we can see how power monitoring from the 12 volt high power connector is implemented. A line of six shunt resistors corresponds to the six power inputs to the card and is paired with two additional resistors on the front of the PCB. Compared to the single shunt resistor found on the Founders Edition, this setup allows for current measurement on each individual power rail rather than just total current. The Astro PCB also features a prominent half circle cutout on the tail end of the board. This design choice is comparable to the fin on previous generations of Founders Editions and allows for unobstructed airflow from the rear fan while also providing additional PCB space. So there we have it. On one hand, the ASUS ROG Astro GeForce RTX 5090 does appear to be a premium custom card that is a notch above the Strix. On the other hand, it absolutely features astronomical pricing. But now that we have it in hand, stay tuned as this card will be water cooled and featured in upcoming builds. Like the video by clicking the like button. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is the Vector Network. Thank you and I'll see you at the next episode.